Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm Calder Ness. Today we're going to be jumping into a little bit of custom Hero Clicks or seeing over at the Hero Clicks Makers Market on Facebook, as well as talk about some incredible upcoming Dial H events that you're not going to want to miss. This is episode 497. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks. I'm here to take back this vibe. You may try. Deadpan humor. Over oh, okay. six oh, people humor. think I am funny. I'm your captain. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fools. Send me to be able to make that out. That's cool because it's expensive. I'm gonna make your clicks like that forever. Are you <laughs> kidding? Wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Shiro Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Shiro Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, D-I-A-L-5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. And if you want to buy Hero Clicks straight from the source, you can go to shop.wizkids.com. Use code DIALH10 for 10% off your Hero Clicks order. Doesn't work on some pre-orders, Iconics, and uh, a handful of other ineligible items you're like always in the studio is simian bruce what's going on simian yo it's me there he is ladies and gentlemen in the flesh in the audio simian uh what made you happy this week my man uh, a few things made me happy this week so number one getting a head start on some spring cleaning i'm uh getting some backlogged hero clicks moved around shifted i have dedicated myself to other than generics keep only one of I'm, I'm going to stop hunting like for legacies and stuff. I'm going to just keep one Whoa. of each figure, even like, yeah, the the old stuff. So I've been moving like my collection around and I'm trying to consolidate a lot of it. Um, so keep an eye out for a huge post, probably like a month from now. I don't know when I'll get around to it, but right now I'm mostly just trying to make space. Um, so yeah, that, that's been making me happy getting some clutter moved. Seems like clutter at least. And then the other thing is we finally, after what feels like, I think it's around eight months, finally have a fourth person at my work. We finally hired a guy. Oh. And uh, so, yeah, today was his first day, so can't make any judgment calls yet. But he did show up on time, and he remembered to bring his ID and his Social Security card, which is more than the last guy that we hired. So that's impressive. Last guy Whoa. showed up 30 minutes late and didn't have either of those things, which I then said to him, how did you drive here without your driver's license? Not like you, you stop being able to drive when you don't have it, but it's just right. one of those things. Like If you're going to drive, you usually <laughs> remember that. Pretty important. Or, you know, I know at least some people have a um, picture on their phone at the very least. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, I've got my wallet. But, you know, I got it just in case. Those are like driver's license on you. In this day and age, I think a lot of people feel weird not going around with their phone sometimes. I feel even yeah. weirder. Like, I'll leave my phone at home sometimes when I'm running errands just for the thrill. The Whoa. thrill of being lost in the world, potentially. Whoa. Yeah. Anything could happen without a phone. Uh, but um, so sometimes I'll like run to the store, do some like errands or whatever with just my wallet and my car keys. And I can't imagine leaving my house without either one of those. One, because without my car keys, I would get to my car and not be able to get into it. But right. two, like my my wallet is like, yeah, it's got everything in there. It's got a lot of stuff that I need, mostly my money, but it's got a lot of stuff that I need in there. That's my Dragon's Lair 20% off yeah, punch card. I can't go anywhere filled without out that. punch cards. Oh, geez. What would happen if I showed up? <laughs> for clicks one day and i didn't have my three filled out punch cards that i never use because i just hoard them like i'm going to be able to buy the store with them someday i would love i would love that you get like 200 300 punch cards and you're just like oh oh it's yours what's my <laughs> the store it's your it's your store now you you have all these filled out punch cards they pull out you this take big you take key. enough 20 percent off yeah yeah <laughs> the gold key this is just, yeah, just massive cartoony key. Oh, well, right on. I'm very excited by your spring cleaning, and I'm so curious because you have a insane collection. You have so much stuff that goes back so far. So I'm like, I'm very curious to see. It is wild. What it turns into after the, the culling, the uh, 
the simian separation of collections and whatnot. I'm I'm super curious to see what happens. Yeah. Speaking of of driver's license and why you should always have one. Uh, what made me happy this week was going back home for Christmas and all that stuff. And I got pulled over, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a long time since I've been pulled over for speeding. Uh, most of you will know I have not gotten a speeding ticket in three, well, after this week, three years, which is which will be cool. Um, but, and I hadn't gotten pulled over since then. I was really happy about that. But sure enough, going home, the 23rd, no, the 22nd, I get pulled over for going 84 miles an hour on the interstate, which is an 80 mile an hour road. You can go 80. So going four wow. miles over got me pulled over. I was you. I was like, you cannot be serious right now. I was absolutely mind blown. And it just, yep. I was like, come on. I, I feel like most people are like, yeah, you know, you can kind of go five over. No big deal. Who cares? Maybe once you're in that six, seven, eight, nine territory, then it's like, whoa, slow down there, bud. But four miles an hour over, I didn't get a ticket. I got a warning, but I was like, come on, man. You yeah. can't You can't be serious. The roads weren't bad, by the way, guys. Roads were fine. Just the time like, that it takes bad. to like process all, like to like get pulled uh, over and like do that whole song and dance doesn't seem yeah, like it's dude. worth it for four miles over. Especially because I've, yeah. I've been on that road. And I've been going like 80 and had people just blow past me. So like easily going 90 or 95. Same way right. with uh, I-29 going down to like oh, Kansas. Going, yeah. Yeah. I've had people like, I think that one's 75. I don't know. But I've I had people that, uh, just blow past me on that one going like I-29 ridiculous. from like Omaha, or I guess I should say from like Council Bluffs to Sioux Falls Really, Council Bluffs to Sioux City, that stretch of I-29 is a lawless wasteland where you can go any speed. <laughs> it says go 70 as your max. You can go literally any any speed. I I believe it because there's no there is no respect for law or <laughs> or any judicial justice system or anything. Uh, because, man, every time I go, like once I hit the Council Bluffs, whatever thing to start going up towards Sioux City, it's just. Dude, it's lawless. You can like, oh man, get a lead foot going on there, accidentally start going ninety, whatever. No one cares. Like it's it's insane. You'll be getting past going ninety on that road, going seventy. Not that I've ever done that, obviously. But for instance. But uh yeah, going home made me happy for Christmas. It was great hanging out with everybody. This year I knocked it out of the park. Everybody enjoyed their present that I got them. I've come a long way from just buying myself a bunch of action figures during the Christmas season with all the sales and stuff to now getting and giving uh, good gifts and everybody really enjoyed it. Uh, my little brother actually got a little piece of Omaha, ironically. So I, the Star Deli turns itself into a gallery every month, lets some artists take over and have their usually pretty funky alternative art there. Um, and there's one time me and my little brother went, he was like, yo, that picture is awesome. And... I just basically said, next time we hung out, I was like, ah, dude, I went to go buy that for you, but it sold. And that's not a lie. It did sell. I bought it. Um, <laughs> and I've been holding on to it for six months, and I finally gave it to him. He was like, yo, finally. So he was pretty excited about that, which I was pretty uh, I was pretty happy about that. So that was pretty fun. But it was just a grand old, a grand old time. We also watched, I forget the name of this movie. I think it's on Disney+. Plus. But it's just some generic early 2000s, like kind of bad, but like kind of funny, like Christmas movie. But stand out is like Brian Cranston plays the goofy uncle in this movie. And it's so, so fun to watch. Like he's basically just being Hal from Malcolm Middle. But it's so good. Like it's so funny. Just was not expecting Brian Cranston to be in this like kind of bad early 2000s like Disney Christmas movie and he obviously steals the show he's hilarious it's just so great but it's about like him stealing Santa's sleigh and kind of like kind of like a scam artist guy but highly recommend don't remember the name of the movie if you have Disney plus I think it's on there somewhere but that was a fun time Ooh, yeah and I, another thing that made me happy I started watching uh second season of what if oh yeah you were talking about that yeah it's uh so far I'm going to go out on a limb and say so far it's more entertaining than season one. Dang I think, bold. yeah, I think the, 
the zombie episode is probably the thing that's like to beat and I think they tried to do that in one of the episodes they have like a similar not like zombie kind of thing but they have like a similar kind of interesting kind of vibe um but no there's there's a few episodes that kind of like leave the form completely which they didn't do in season one and so I'm really enjoying season two because of that no spoilers I also but, yeah. yeah I won't I won't spoil anything either but um I want to say yeah I think f- episode four is what's out right now I'm really enjoying the season well I think I'm caught up to episode four or I guess episode five maybe a few have actually come out I don't really know I think it's is it one a day or is it one a I think week? it's I've, once a week, but well, I, I don't know. I just binge watched them today. So yeah, oh sure. Um, I will say I agree with you one hundred percent. Like that first episode was like one of the best episodes of What If ever. I think that might honestly be my new favorite. Is the What If Nebula joined Nova Corps? Holy smokes, was that like yeah. so good? And it's then done um, in like such a cool noir style, oh, and it like so it screams like the whole time. I was like, what is this aesthetic? And then I was like, oh yeah, it's just like the Blade Runner kind of like universe very much except yeah. with Marvel characters which is really fun and um, I'm a, I'm a sucker for I, I won't spoil Happy Hogan Saved Christmas but I'm a, I was a sucker for how they did it and then also again I don't want to spoil it but referencing um, some comic book characters that we never got to see in the MCU was really cool and I really I really heavily enjoyed a lot of the comic book references there that was pretty fun so that was a like a great episode the i'm kind of eh, i'm kind of so so on the second episode the peter quill attacked earth's mightiest heroes yeah. i'm kind of like don't really think that was the best cool use concept of characters. such a yeah such a like long episode long feeling yeah. episode for something that's already kind of been done which is like a what if like this threat was here earlier? Yeah, you know, that kind of thing. But yeah, what did you feel of the Sakari and Iron Man episode? Um, I feel like that episode they tried to do too many different things, and I think if they had just stuck with the like Alita Battle Angel, is that what it's called? I don't know. Uh, if they had stuck with the like murder ball kind of aspect of it. I yeah. think it would have been a much better episode than what it ended up being because they it just felt like they were trying to do a lot of different story and a lot of like exposition kind of stuff in such a little time. It's, yeah, I, I will say definitely if you haven't seen that episode, give that one a watch because it gives you a completely different view on what Sakari and Iron Man is doing on the Hero Clicks map. Very much so. Yeah. I think he still works. Yeah. Ironically, still I think makes he still works. Some sense. Still makes yeah. most of the sense. It's just a much different version of sense. Yeah, I agree. But yeah, what if season two is really good? And honestly, it makes me wish it was coming out in this next Disney Plus set, man. Yeah. Because every time I see an episode, I'm just like, wow, that is so sick. <laughs> the Nebula episode, especially. Her team in that, I want that team so bad in Hero Clicks. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That would be fun. So it's nowhere in the solicits, yeah, and I think nowhere, it's new it's enough in, in release that it's not going to be. It's in that yeah, set it's whatsoever. Just too, it's too new. And also, I will say another thing that worries me about what if season two is just overall um, what toys are being pushed by like Funko and Marvel Legends, Hasbro, and all that stuff. It worries me a lot uh, because it's none of the coolest versions so far. So like. All I've been seeing is like a lot of pushes for Goliath, which is kind of neat. I think for yeah. fans of Goliath who were like Bill Foster, we see him in Ant-Man 2 a little bit. And it's like, oh, it would have been cool to see him as Goliath. It is cool to see him as Goliath, but like that episode is not good. I guess I don't think it is. So it's kind of weird. But like that is a character I, I would like to see. And then they're also pushing like the silver hydra stomper version which i haven't seen uh, that episode yet or even if it's out i honestly don't know it is um it is okay um, uh, i don't know if that's good but it's like we have a hydra stomper i know why marvel legends is pushing it because they can reuse the figure but like i don't know if overall marvel is like pushing these episodes because it does seem like the toys that were yeah. being pushed the lego sets or whatever that were being pushed is also what we got clicks 
So I would lo- I would have loved to see a Nova Core Nebula being pushed to like maybe be like, hey, that'll probably get clicks because man, it was so tight, so good. I I do really like the Hydra Stomper episode. Okay, um, I think that's up there. It's one of those ones that runs parallel to because they're all what if stories. So they all kind of have like some element of like running parallel to either real life elements or. Uh, like movie, comic, whatever. And so it, it does a retelling of an MCU kind of movie in short form fashion. And I really like how they did it. Um, okay. At least up to like a certain point. At one point, it seems like it kind of gets off the rails. But uh, the Hydra Stomper seems a lot more, uh, well, obviously, like it's a lot more outfitted in this version. But. Uh, yeah, it doesn't feel like the Hydra Stomper that we got in Disney Plus. This is a silver one, so it's right. <laughs> it's like Justin Hammer got uh, a hold of it or something, added every missile, every minigun, that kind of that scene from what what Iron Man two, where they do that to the Iron Man armor, like when they outfit it, like the for War Machine or whatever. Yeah, that's yeah, <laughs> that's what this Hydra Stomper feels like. It's like somebody got oh, a hold of this. Okay. I dig, I dig that. Uh, as we all know, War Machine is like super dope. So I'm cool. I'm you know I'm cool with that. But yeah, I yeah. What if season two is good? I hope to see it all, or at least most of it, into Hero Clicks one day. Because man, it's it's pretty cool. I would also really like a sneaky, happy Hogan with a interesting dial as well. I think that would be, I think that would be a lot of fun. Or the Christmas Avengers would be hilarious as well. Iron Man in his Santa suit and Cap in his like elf costume would be pretty funny. And, like Russian ballet, Black Widow as well would be kind of neat. But mm-hmm. all right, let's go ahead. Before we get too far into the Maker's Market and everything, just really quick for what old Wiz Kids Hero Clicks page on Facebook is posting recently, they're kind of doing a bit of uh, a bit of their of their own end of the year type voting. So. If you want to go and comment in those, they have a couple of pieces like best, like common, uncommon, rare, super rare chase of the year. I think they have stuff like that. Best figure of the year overall, uh, best set, stuff like that. So they're posting a few of those. If you want to drop a picture, you can go ahead and do that as well. But just real quick shout out before we get too far into the show, WizKids is doing that. And in case you missed it. Uh, Dial H is doing a massive end of the year show. It is going to be this Saturday, December 30th at 7 p.m. on our YouTube channel. We are going to be live, and it is our Clixies end of the year award show for 2023 Hero Clicks, which all of the voting on that has wrapped. We ended it on Christmas. The end votes, we had 219 people vote and submit their answers for our best set, best iconics, best chase theme, et cetera, et cetera. All of the Clixies award show. Uh, categories and we're going to get that contabulated and whatnot and ready for an awesome show this saturday guys but 219 is really good that's the most we've had ever so far so that's like a standout year next year i mean absolutely let's shoot for more but just right now if you voted round of applause pat yourself on the back thank you so much for getting us a ton of great data in order to make a like really valid award show i think a very far reaching and well made award show that like kind of spans a good amount of hero clicks players and knowledge and everything uh from what i'm gathering it looks really great so we're gonna have a really cool night the data is going to be substantial and i think it's going to be a pretty legit hero clicks award show that i'm really excited to showcase to everybody but seriously thank you everybody that voted and did the whatever all 219 of you thank you guys we really appreciate that i know there's a lot of you that are probably listening to this that are like oh dang i missed my chance to vote well that's all right you can still come in tune in saturday for the award show and see what wins Uh, i encourage you to do so because it's going to be a lot of fun there's gonna be a lot of audience interaction as well it'll be a good time so quick plug for that before we get too crazy all right Jumping into the bulk of our show here, we're going to go ahead and take a look over at the Heroclix Makers Market on Facebook. Simeon, there is some pretty standout stuff. I won't lie. I was kind of blown away by some of the things that were shared these last couple of days, this like last week or so, or so excuse me. Um, I was completely blown away. A lot of it were kind of used, and this is like no offense, but like a lot of what we're kind of used to is like, oh, here's some bystanders. 
here are some hero clicks trays. Here are some action tokens or barrier markers or stuff. You know, it's kind of like stuff we're kind of used to seeing. I will say quick shout out to like Adam Shiver, who has like some of the cleanest looking really cool hero clicks trays I've seen in a while. Uh, they look pretty tight, very well made. I really like his like Deadpool Joker ones, yeah. and then his Prime, like his Batman Prime Hero Clicks tray is like really just a really cool yeah. style. It's also got um, like so magnets yeah. built into it and stuff. So. Yeah, all the magnet stuff, dude. I love it. So yeah, really quick shout out Adam Shiver. These look at me. I really like that Blue Beetle one. The Blue Beetle looks so clean. But yeah, quick shout out to Adam Shiver. Looks good, man. Looks really good. They look really tight. But what I really want to highlight and I really want to focus is, let me just find the post here. It's like right at the top of the page because it's just been pop blowing up. Brandon Michael Bruner made a, not not only like made a custom set. At, it's not like a full, full set list, but he also has a custom booster. He has some custom bystanders. He has full custom dial tops, cards and dials and sculpts for a handful of figures that belong to a Heroclix Resident Evil set. And it looks absolutely incredible. He plans on making all 68 characters, as said, on the booster. Uh, right now, he's got about 11 characters fully finished, as well as three bystanders, which is really cool. But man, it looks absolutely incredible. So first off, dude made a booster. Almost literally never see that i love that he made a custom booster Not I just a bo ten. it's like a booster that from a picture it'd be hard for you to not actually oh. like think that it was like real it's i mean cool. obviously we know it's not real because it's we would have heard about a capcom resident evil set right. but it's it's well done looks like he printed it on cardstock and folded it or printed it on something because it's definitely like a folded box it's not just paper taped to a box which is what i would have done if i was trying to make a fake booster like taped to a booster yeah the i don't know it, it does look really good though and yeah you're right it's like card stock and then he folded it so like he made the image work so it would be fold foldable into a booster which is like honestly kind of like difficult in its own right which is really cool so it says like capcom hero clicks resident evil collect all 68 figures he's got the little ages 14 plus like it looks really good. I really believe it as like a real hero clicks booster. Like I think it at first glance would totally fool somebody who like didn't know better or like hadn't played hero clicks in a few years and thought, Oh, I guess this is just a thing. So currently the characters he has, some of them are all over the set, but for the most part, these are all higher rarity chases to super rares. He has Claire Redfield, G nemesis, uh, I don't... I've never played Resident Evil Village. The Lady Demestris Q. Yeah. However you say it, yeah. I don't know. Lady Demestris... Dem the Demestris, big vampire whatever. lady. Yeah. Big old vampire lady. <laughs> I don't... Yeah. Memes about her. I'm not going to uh, attempt it. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. X, a liquor. Leon Kennedy, a tyrant. Albert Wesker, Chris Redfield, and then Ada Wong. I'm... Um, Already, this is like, again, Resident Evil has a ton of iconic characters and like obviously iconic zombie enemies and all that stuff. So it works really well. We can kind of glimpse a couple of the traits and special powers that a lot of these characters have, which is really cool. He's also using like Rally in the set, which is so fun. Uh, even like Rally hasn't been used for a couple of sets, you know? So it's kind of fun to see like, oh yeah, it's not just fanboy dials it's like oh these are these are real some old like some hero clicks abilities that you're even throwing in the set so i really like the idea of like the use of your custom set having rally is just really cool and then all these custom sculpts are great i need to like read the post here really quickly actually this will probably help in figuring out some questions i have so brandon says this has been a big passion project throughout most of the past year and he's still not even halfway done but these are the characters i finished so far for my resident evil set and i yes i plan on making all 68 characters but i wanted to show off where i'm at now and give the community's consensus and just show off my own artwork for the first time in a while enjoy also if you want me to post the full cards and dials i totally can big thanks to the makers of clicksmaker.com and mike hala sabetta for hooking me up with how to make dials and get the models so I don't know if these are all 3D printed models and he painted them as well, or if he had to go buy these models somewhere and then paint them, or how he necessarily got like hands on the models. But yeah, he's got custom dial tops that he like printed out for like the stats and stuff. He's got custom cards, I assume, from this like clicksmaker.com. 
and they look great. Like these look like hero books pieces. They look so sick. Um, and you can kind of get a couple of like a glimpses of like their abilities. The tyrant straight up has close make three. It's three close attacks, which is yeah. I'm really curious to see. Yeah, I'm really curious to see what the uh, what the dial looks like on that. That's a little that's a little scary if it works off close and he has charge and something kind of nuts. You know what I mean? So it's like, all right, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, well, he does have. Is, yeah, we can see that he has charge on yeah, click one oh, with oh, a dang. eleven attack and a special attack power that we can't read. But um, oh, geez, four exploit. Oh, yikes. yeah, that's four uh, exploit. Oh. An eleven he's for pretty four. good. He's pretty. That's pretty good. A little little charge, make make three attacks. A little eleven for four, four exploit. Woof. Yeah, Wesker's a twelve for four. Ooh, I like that. And he has he has three point values, but yeah, um, I definitely think it'd be. And he he did give the, I think like the files of like the full cards and stuff to people in the comments that were asking. I didn't think ahead of time to do that, but Ooh, um, he did say. Whether I don't know whether these are three D printed. I almost think maybe he purchased these because somebody asked if these would be for sale at some point, and he said he doesn't intend to because just to recoup the cost, each figure would be roughly uh, seventy dollars each, which makes uh, me think that um, uh, somebody probably these either came from like another game, some sort yeah. of miniatures line, or he paid somebody to make these. Man, the fact that if he's like making each figure and it's like seventy dollars each for what I assume would, would yeah cost for these custom sculpts, I assume is what he's probably getting at. That's uh that's an expensive sixty eight figure set, man. Hot dog, it's a dang. It would be fun though. It, wow, dude, that is so much. Yeah. But it's cool. I do I do just love the care and time it takes to do all this. Even if it is just like commissioning like the sculpts to get made, you're still like designing all the dials gluing them together putting all that stuff up you know making a custom booster is just like so cool and it's just like a level of creativity in the hero Cooks community that i really wanted to highlight this episode because man that's just that's really freaking cool i really like it we've gone over like custom sets before that people have made on hc realms which in hindsight compared to something like this is kind of relatively easy even though that in and of itself is like kind of hard to do like to make a custom set and like take all that whatever to make custom dials and abilities takes a lot for people to do there are people that have made like 100 person custom sets and then there are people that have made like 50 character custom sets and i'm always kind of impressed by some of the work people can do and they like objectively look at what a hero hooks figure could and should do and they make them like kind of balanced and like kind of cool but it's also fun just seeing people's passion for other things uh and then ultimately their passion for hero clicks being like i would really 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 love resident evil in hero clicks and then boom here it is he's going out and doing it like it's so sick it's like really really cool makes me makes me want to try to like make a custom set i don't know about you simian but like now maybe, it's like, uh, maybe, maybe a starter set or a fast force <laughs> like a starter or fast forces yeah. yeah definitely not a if it's you know 70 dollars a figure a full 68 no person set. that's uh and part of that ooh he might be wrapping like some of like his just like his time like maybe he's like oh like, you know, sure. yeah it, it took me you know however long and i value my time at this amount um so i, I don't know if like 70s fair. exactly the 100 percent accurate but i mean they are highly detailed and painted which i know if he's doing that by his own hand or if he's paying somebody to do that that's a long process or a costly process so yeah but no i i'd be super interested in trying something similar it just man the amount of time commitment because i'm cheap so i'm not gonna pay somebody to do this like if i were to try and do it i'd try and do it like the the cheapest route possible and the time commitment just to get like a few figures on dial and painted and everything would be insane absolutely dude like oh i know i've got however many miniatures games that i still like really want to play that have unpainted miniatures and i'm like the thought of painting like 10 miniatures or something is just no please anything else absolute torture don't make me do this uh but then like the same thing like i don't want to play them unpainted and so another we'll cost we'll simply never play the game 
So if I wanted to make this, if I was going to like try and 3D print this myself, um, I just remembered that uh, a lot of assets like this, if somebody has these ready, like modeled for you to download, you have to purchase those, and those aren't those can mm. cost you know up to twenty dollars plus each. Uh, I know there's a oh. I can't remember what it was. There's some model. It was like a I think an Iron Man helmet that was really cool looking, and that person's model they were charging twenty five dollars for the like files to that one. So I can imagine if somebody has three D renders of all these or whatever they are, um, or like the original files, maybe like charged him for those and then he printed them off or oh sure yeah I don't know. There's a lot of ways you can go about it. I would say the hardest one would have been. To like do molded clay, just start from scratch, kind of thing. Jeez, that would be so difficult, especially with G, who's got like a that massive eye and the like Cronenberg kind of like shoulder blade. Ugh, all freaky. Oh, I love it. But yeah, just shout out to old Brandon here. This is like super cool, and I love seeing it. And then also in the makers market, the the Mike guy that we alluded to earlier, Mike Calla Sabetta. I want to say it's probably Sabeta, something like that. Uh, he also made a custom Watchmen set, so he like re. I would I would basically say kind of close to like legacy cards, but he like retooled the dials and like powers and stuff for the original Watchmen. Kind of ripped their sculpts off, put them on new bases. Seeing these like sculpts on <laughs> Oreo bases is so wild, you know. Um, but it's pretty cool. And then he also made the uh, Archimedes, the Owl Ship, which is really yeah. cool. So. Like kind of like redid the Watchmen movie set, which is pretty fun. And it's pretty cool to look at. He's also posted, if you guys want to see a couple of the dials. Let me see. I think I know it's like Night Owls, Silk Spectre, I want to say, and Rorschach. Oh, and Archimedes. So pretty cool. He's posted a couple of the dials and stuff here as well, which is really fun. So the much needed upgrade to the Watchmen uh, set, which, man. I still so wish we would get uh, Watchmen made again in Hero Clix. That is still such a such a high want. But if you don't already follow or are in the Hero Clix makers market, there's a decent amount of people here. There's uh, 1,300 people, like, members in this thing. Definitely, like, 100% go join this group just to, like, see what people are doing for, like, Hero Clix accessories and all sorts of other, like, really cool stuff. Because, man, it's kind of been blowing me away this past week, some of the work that's been people have been putting into and which ultimately just stems from the love of hero clicks and everything and making their own custom ones and all this fun stuff or bringing older ones for characters that are just probably not quite as playable actually probably the watchmen are not playable in today in today's like game you know they're so old but like making them playable again is like really fun or like really cool or putting your own spin on them is like pretty neat so yeah especially like the custom booster thing is just so wild and now it's like oh kind of makes you be like man maybe i should like go make finally quit complaining and go make a custom you know evil dead set or something it's just cool <laughs> also if you if you scroll back far enough on the hero clicks makers market you'll see somebody named chaz burzel who makes a uh, line of fire tools from 2018 so oh sure hope that guy still plays and doesn't just sit at home in ohio not answering my texts so yeah i hope that guy still plays too it'd be really yeah. cool and look at these line of fire tools. maybe i should pop a comment in there and see if i can buy some you should <laughs> 2018 yeah i bet i bet i'll respond he probably deleted well he didn't delete facebook because it's still up but yeah probably doesn't get on it anymore <laughs> not. we hope we hope not yeah or maybe we hope i don't know i don't know what to hope anymore chad if you're listening to this except just kidding no you're not uh love you buddy <laughs> I was gonna say, Gosh. Chad didn't listen when he when he was playing. There's no way he listens oh, now. So sad. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. The other uh, really cool thing: somebody took the um, the idea of the Hall of Armor displays and kind of oh, ran yeah. with it. Uh, 3D printed their own displays and added slots for LEDs, some little tiny LEDs, and there's some. Uh, some of like the 3D rendered kind of process, and then there's pictures with actual figures inside of them, and like the LEDs glowing, and it uh, it just adds a little like you know little boops and beeps kind of flare to the display, which is really fun. And I bet there like you could put a little tiny battery, and those LEDs probably last for an insanely long time on a single battery. So 
not a terrible idea for displaying. Yeah, I like the way they turned out. They just look so, I don't know, a lot more techy. They really add to the Iron Man Hall of Armors aesthetic. They look really cool. Yeah. But all right, that is the Hero Clicks of Makers Market. Go check it out. We've already done plenty of plug-in for it. Make sure you go check it out. It's pretty neat. Oh, yeah. Like, also, I want to shout these out, too, all right. I just keep, like, scrolling down and seeing more. Um, Eric Melton over here, he's taken these old, like, Marvel trading cards and made them to be, like, custom Hero Clicks, like, holders, which is really cool. Kind of flipped through some of them. He's got... Kind of ones that look like they're pretty much what the sculpt is based off of. At least like this Iceman one really is, which is really cool. It's like an Iceman card with some stack of cardboard or something in between it. Then where you would insert the figures, like also like that character's face again. So if it's like Iceman, then see Iceman's face again. Like the Ultron one looks really cool. And like all of these like old Marvel 90s trading cards, I feel like you can get a million for $10. Like insanely cheap to get just a ton of them. But it's like really cool that you can just kind of slot the figure in there like his kind of idea like how to repurpose these trading cards to be a little more i don't know a little more cool give them a second life they look like really sick yeah so yeah go check out the hero Clicks makers market on facebook if you have it and make sure you just i don't know look at all the cool stuff because man there's just a lot of freaking cool stuff being posted on here and i love i love seeing the custom sets fun little characters the cool ways like to display your hero clicks it's just a ton of fun speaking of another thing that'll be a ton of fun this is episode 497 which means ladies and gentlemen we are dangerously and i do mean dangerously close to dial h for hero clicks episode 500 it will be an absolutely massive and phenomenal episode this is you know 10 plus years of dial h for hero clicks 500 episodes countless countless listening hours uh from then to now it's going to be pretty incredible not only will simian ian and myself be on the episode but we're going to have some pretty freaking awesome special guests and i strongly urge people to send us a ton of listener questions this will be a, a bit of a ask us anything type beat so we definitely want to make this a very big, like, community-focused, as well as kind of a, not so much reminiscent, but, oh man, what was your first episode like? What was the game of Heroclix like at that time? It's it's going to be a lot of that and more, and even some of, some very cool surprises will also happen on episode 500. Some things that I will say the average listener is not quite, not quite ready yet for. But keeping in mind the vibe of the episode being a looking back at 500 episodes of Dial H for Hero Clicks, what the landscape of Hero Clicks has changed over that time. Uh, keep something like that in mind when you send in questions. Seriously, send in send in just a ton of questions about Simeon, myself, Ian, etc., etc. Uh, anything you've ever wanted to know about your hosts of Dial H, please send those in. And then we'll be having some pretty special things for Patreon members that talk uh, that send in questions over the Discord will be another interesting thing that I can't quite ooh, spoil on the show right now. But trust me, you're gonna want to you're gonna want to send in those listener questions because it is gonna be mm, how do I say this pretty dang incredible, and you guys are going to be I think pretty much mind blown for episode 500. We've got a lot of really cool things planned, and that is just me saying, hey, make sure you're on the lookout for it because you absolutely do not want to miss it. In years past, we have done. Usually a live stream. Episode 300, episode 400. Those have all been live streams over on YouTube. This one is going to be more so a true blue episode of the podcast. So kind of making our YouTube stuff not, not totally separate from the podcast, but just saying we did those for a while. Those were pretty fun. I want to say out of all of our landmark episodes, because episode 100 was also like a YouTube live stream, only episode 200 has been a special podcast. So we're kind of going back to doing a special podcast to for episode 500. Because um, I don't know how many more super long charity streams we have in us uh, <laughs> with what all happened during episode 400, which somehow feels like forever ago and then also yesterday. I don't know. It's kind of crazy, but somehow it was like totally just yesterday. It was episode 400, and now somehow today it is episode 500 in a couple of weeks. So 
it'll be pretty it'll be pretty dang incredible but yeah is there anything you want to say about episode 500 here coming up soon simian that the listener should be aware of no uh, i i think that wraps it up pretty good uh um, i think that yeah sticking with the audio format we'll be able to do some fun things and it'll also be for for the people that have listened over the years it'll be something more special to them because i know there's a lot of people that listen to podcasts but probably don't watch live streams or don't necessarily watch live streams so yeah we're we're gonna be doing it podcast not live we'll be we'll be live at the time and then uh i don't know posted in post later but uh i think it's uh yeah more of a treat for the people of the podcast fandom which i know there's a lot of cross listeners and watchers and stuff but yeah it's mostly going to fit that format which is good i think it's it's fine it's good i think that uh that's what people want for for their podcast is to be a podcast <laughs> yeah yeah, I agree with you there. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that is pretty much our show this week. We got a couple of decent plugs out of the way. I do want to do one more quick one. I sort of mentioned the Patreon and that if you're on our Discord and you ask us questions for episode 500, there's kind of some special things. Trust me, you don't want to miss that. I can't tell you exactly what it is right now, but trust me, it's it's going to be pretty freaking awesome. We're also giving away a lot of cool stuff. Uh, this December for the quick Patreon giveaway. Here's what I will say that I, I will personally be kind of throwing into the pot and letting people win a Guardians holiday calendar and then a Iron Man Iconics uh, separately will be given away to a lucky Patreon member. So if you want to join for as little as $5 a month, gets you access not only to five giveaway entries, but also to the Patreon and the super cool Discord where you can chat with Simeon, Ian, or I most nights. Bill almost every night, I guess, if you ever want to chat with um and then he but sorry you also get access to some really cool behind the scenes content like videos that are just for patreon members that are on the discord and behind the scenes pictures of us filming on set some days and some pretty fun shenanigans that go down there's a lot of really cool content that's added to the patreon as well as at higher tiers you can get custom dialogue for hero cooks action tokens dice and all sorts of other really cool things but Probably one of the best things is just being able to be on our Discord server, which is a ton of fun, and having that direct line to all three of us. It is a grand old time, and consider checking it out at patreon.com slash Dial H Podcast. Yeah. Speaking of Dial H Podcast, I probably should have done this at the uh, top of the hour, but uh, here we are. Uh, I do want to make a, a little uh, cleaning up kind of notice, uh, or I don't know. I don't know what you would call it. Uh, clarification uh we dropped an episode 496 that was four minutes long uh, i took it down from podbean because obviously that's not what the intention was but it did go out to a couple of like stitcher and spotify and maybe even apple and stuff so i assume it's still up on those but if you heard that and you were confused what happened was i did a fun little interview with uh eli and emilio and I think we're going to try and get them back on at a later date to repeat that interview because at the end of everything, when I had it all edited, I hit the uh, export button and thought everything was well and good, not realizing I exported just the intro portion of the audio. So I exported four minutes of audio, uploaded that, assuming it was the right thing, and then I closed everything only to find out that... Uh, I didn't export the right thing and then obviously didn't save anything because I thought I had exported it. So that was rough. But uh, if we can convince them to come back on, they did a really fun thing at their local venue. And I think that the community would like to hear about it. And hopefully I can convince them to repeat everything they talked about for an hour the last time. And uh, we'll actually get that uploaded at some point. But uh, yeah, if you notice that and we're just wondering, that's what that was. Just a little blip that happened. A little frustrating, but it does happen occasionally. A lot more rare now, but uh, yeah, I'm going to be hitting save and auto save on every podcast from now on. The main reason I didn't was because then I have twice the amount of data like building up on my computer and I have to clear it twice as fast. Right. But um, yeah, it just takes, it takes one of those to remind me why I do that, so... I'm going to, yeah, go back to that format, I guess. 
it's just always so sad when that happens because we get into just like such a group of like oh yeah record edit upload record edit upload and there i mean there have been times where we've recorded entire videos or entire podcasts and then been like oh it either wasn't recording or whatever and it always it never ever feels less terrible it always feels awful every time that happens because it's like uh yeah two and a half hours how many times Uh, did we record the uh halloween battle royal that one year oh geez that i think it was like three four times that game was recorded oh that was that was awful it happened. And it yeah, was like it, it was like fun. It was like it was like fun the first time. And it's like, oh, at least it was like kind of different the second time. And the third time it was like, okay, we get it. Please record. <laughs> yeah, there was some there was oh, there's all sorts of fun, like technical difficulties we've had, like ugh, past videos and podcasts, and it's just like, all right, no, we already did this. Not very funny anymore. Technology, not very funny. No. Yeah. But it will be remedied. I will make sure that story sees the light of day. Uh, sadly, there's just there's almost zero way of uh, recovering something after your computer says, "Are you sure you want to close without saying?" And you say yes, and then you <laughs> close it. It's almost impossible to get that data back. Uh, I tried for probably two hours, and then I was like, "Ah, this is not going to work. This is insane." Um, so, yeah, that's gone with the wind completely into the void but i i do think that episode will come out eventually uh and then on top of that man you know what you should do with all that uh christmas running that's just running around in your pockets burning a hole in your pocket what should, what should i do Simeon? you should go to coolstuffinc.com get yourself some cool stuff like the latest hero clicks singles and sealed products and if you use code dial five when you check out you'll save five percent off and uh eventually you'll get uh that you, our code does stack with the uh the singles and the sealed product Ooh, like baby. their normal discounts for returning customers so yeah, yeah you actually do get a pretty decent chunk off by using our code on top of having normal discounts it's pretty cool and then it's free shipping over a hundred dollars which is also a huge benefit i'm not sure how much they ship internationally if at all but uh yeah i know stateside it's free shipping over a hundred dollars and then uh if you want to go direct to the source and i know for sure these guys ship to over 200 countries you can go to shop.wizkids.com and if you use code dial h10 when you check out you will save 10 percent off your order doesn't work on iconics uh pre-releases and specialty figures but everything else should be good to go right on and like always ladies and gentlemen happy trails and if you ever want more hero clicks content just dial h so if you're looking for emotional satisfaction my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks <laughs> not going there that's how numbers work over okay, six yeah, over people work. think i am funny i'm your captain america that was just you in a costume. Well, the rest of these...